Would you bow your heads in a word of prayer with me? Lord, we are here today under your care and protection. Guide our thoughts and our actions to bring you glory. Amen. Good morning. morning. Happy New Year again. I want to read some scripture from the book of Joshua this morning. The 24th chapter, verses 1 through 3a, and then 14 through 25. Then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the, the land beyond the Euphrates and led them throughout Canaan to give him my de- many descendants. And then to 14. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, Then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us our parents up in Egypt from the land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring uh, disaster on you and make an end to you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. We are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant before the people and there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of those words from The book of Joshua this morning. Have you ever thrown away something and regretted that you had thrown it away? There was a grand piano that was going up for auction. And this piano once belonged to John Lennon of the Beatles. Before John died, he gave this piano to a friend. The friend then gave the piano to a, a school And someone at the school, who obviously didn't know the the piano's famous owner, sold it with a couple of other pianos for a grand total of $3,000. Fortunately, someone realized the piano's value, and it sold at auction for $3 million. We all have a few things that we wish we hadn't thrown away, right? Just, we do. Maybe nothing as famous and valuable, but things that matter to us. Oh, what did I do with that? I threw it away. Oh, we didn't want to do that. But most of us have the opposite problem. We keep a bunch of stuff that we should throw away, right? Your house is stuffed full of it. 
There's something called the 30-day minimalism game, which is, uh, you can find it in on minimalistic, uh, minimalistus.com website. Websites just floor me, but that's, what it, that's where it comes from. If you're not a math person, the game seems simple. On the first day of the month, you throw away or give away one thing. On the second day of the month, you get rid of two things. And on the third day, you get rid of three things. And it's just easy peasy, right? But if you do the math, it means that at the end of 30 days, you will have thrown away 465 items. Now, I bet a lot would... We'd all notice a big change in our homes if we got rid of 365 items in a month, even in a year, if you think about it. I bet we'd all notice that in our homes. It's hard to throw away things even when we know it's stuff that no longer serves a purpose for us. Speaking of throwing things away, have you ever, have you ever thought of how fortunate how very fortunate we are to have modern conveniences like garbage collection. How many of you have garbage collection where you live? Yeah, okay. Now, I respect people that want to live off the grid. I really do. But garbage collection is a perk of modern life that I don't want to give up in the near future for sure. You know what I mean? In ancient times and civilizations, people used to to throw their garbage on the floor. They'd be eating, you know, and they get a pork chop bun and throw it on the floor. Or they'd throw it out in the yard. Or they'd throw their garbage out in the street. And of course, the garbage didn't just sit there and, and rot. There was plenty of pigs and boars and, and dogs and cats and all kind of vermin that kept the garbage disposal uh, at a minimum because they ate all that stuff. But it's everywhere. It's on the floor and it's in the street and it's terrible. Now, thinking about that, aren't you thankful for the early morning roar of the garbage truck going down your street? I am. About 500 BC, the government of ancient Greece made it illegal to throw away trash in the street. You're just not allowed to do that no more. And they established a law that the garbage needed to be dis disposed of at a dump a mile away from the walls of the city. And just like today, plenty of people were, were griping about this new law. They said, how dare the government tell me to, to, I can't throw garbage in the street. How can they do that? They're trying to take away our rights. The next thing you know, we'll have to give up the gladiator games. Whoa. We can thank Ben Franklin for starting the first garbage collection and street cleaning service in the 1700s, which greatly improved the health of the local population. It truly did. Ben Franklin's method proved the point. How we throw things away makes a big difference in our health. It just truly does. In today's Bible passage, what I read is the story of Joshua's last message to the people of Israel. Joshua had led them faithfully into the promised land and was a mediator to a new covenant between God and the people. He had given the very best of himself to God and to his people. Now Joshua knew that his life was coming to a close. And this was the last opportunity to turn the nation of Israel toward the source of of their identity and their salvation and their strength. And that was the Lord God Almighty. His challenge to them begins in verse 14. He said, Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. The word, the verb to serve is repeated seven times in the last two verses in 14 and 15. It appears 15 times in this one chapter. Joshua clearly believes that the purpose of his life and the purpose of everyone's life is to serve the Lord in all faithfulness. That's what he believed. But before they could 
wholeheartedly serve God. They had to deal with some garbage that was in their lives. They had to throw some things away that needed to be thrown away. As Joshua said in verse 14, he said, Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord with But in serving the Lord seems understandable, un, undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves the day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you now live. But for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This is one of the most powerful challenges in the Old Testament. And it will just, it's just as relevant today as it was thousands of years ago. How can Joshua's challenge apply to our lives? How can it affect us? Well, first of all, we can't serve the Lord with all faithfulness until the, we throw away the lesser gods that compete for control of our lives. We just can't. In her book, No Other Gods, Kelly Minter writes, For so much of my life, I worshiped God. I showed up for church. I sang hymns. I helped in the nursery. I, I, I read my Bible. I confessed my belief in God. I did all that, yet if you could witness what I wanted, what was controlling me, what motivated and moved me, you would have seen that it, in many cases, was not God at all, but my idols. Now, not carved images, though, but people and career paths and materialism and acceptance and more. God was getting my worship on some level, but... My gods were getting my service. Think about that for a minute. God was getting my worship on some level, but my gods were getting my service on another. You see, what we serve, what motivates us and moves us, becomes our God. That's God with a little g. We may worship God, on Sunday, that's God with a big G, but spend the rest of the week serving idols. It's our actions that we invest our energy and money and talents into. What determines our God? What determines what we do with our possessions? Our actions always reveal our real values. No matter what you say, your actions reveal the truth. What you do, what people see, that's your truth. Think about that for a minute. Our actions reveal our true values. Our actions reveal the truth about us. That's why our service reveals our true gods. What is it that commands most of your attention? Your energy, your your time, your skills, your passion. You can't serve the Lord with all faithfulness until you throw away the lesser gods. Those gods that compete for your service. And the lesser God that di distracts us the most, you know what it is? It's self. It's me. It's you. It's our own happiness. It's our own comfort, our own pride, our own security, our own ego. That's why it's so hard to confront the, and conquer this idolatry. It's almost as if Jesus knew our dilemma when he said, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Joshua also knew that we needed to replace our lesser gods with the power of the one true God. So he tells the people in verse 23, he said, Now then, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord 
the God of Israel. Just throw them all away. That's the second component of serving the Lord with all faithfulness. Yielding our hearts to him. There's a prayer that I come across that uh, expresses how much we miss out on when we hold back from yielding our hearts to the Lord. And it goes something like this. You asked me for my hands that I might use them for your purpose. I gave them for a moment, but then withdrew them for the work was so hard. You asked me for my mouth to speak out against injustice. I gave you a whisper so that I might not be accused. You asked me for my eyes to see the pain of poverty. I closed them because I didn't want to see. You asked me for my life that you might work through me. I gave a, a small part that I might not get too involved. Lord, forgive me of my calculated efforts to serve you only when it's convenient for me to do so. Only in places where it's safe for me to do so. Only with those who make it easy for me to do so. Oh God, forgive me. Renew me. Send me out as a usable instrument that I might take seriously the meaning of your cross. Amen. So how do you know if you've yielded your heart to the Lord, how do you know? Well, your values and actions will align with the values and actions of the kingdom of God. And here's another clue. Once your heart belongs to God, then faithful service to him is a joy. It's not an obligation. So many people feel that they're obligated to serve the Lord. Well, you are, but is there any joy in it for you? So many people go about it with no joy at all. Pastor Miles Brandon tells how he saw this kind of faithful service to God in a young woman that he dated in college. He said she worked as a teacher in a depressed area of Houston, Texas. She lived in a modest apartment and she drove a 10-year-old Toyota. She was a committed Christian who participated in various ministries of her church in her spare time. Many months after they began dating, she revealed a secret to him. She was the winner of a multi-million dollar Powerball jackpot some time ago. She had unimaginable wealth. She was rich. Yet she was living off of her teacher's salary and using her winnings to support her younger sister and to fund numerous ministries in her church. The money served no purpose for her life except to increase her giving toward good works. Her actions and lifestyle proved that her heart belonged to God. Is that asking too much of us? Not when you look at the cross and consider what God did for us. No comparison. In the book of Philippians, Paul writes that in our relationship with others, we should have the same mindset as Jesus, who even though he was God, took on the form of a servant, humbled himself to the point of death, even death on a cross. He is the ultimate example of wholehearted service to God. And his service brought life and healing and hope to all humanity. Jesus serves as our unfailing example of someone whose inner person, whose mind, will, heart, soul, and understanding were entirely yielded to God. This was the source of his strength and his courage and his peace. And because of this unyielded, this, this wholehearted commitment to God, Jesus took on the nature of a servant and was obedient to death on a cross. This is how he served God with all faithfulness. The cross of Jesus is the ultimate symbol of servanthood. The cross is the reminder that there is no lesser God 
who loves us. There is no lesser God who can save us. There is no lesser God that proved his wholehearted commitment to us first like the one true God. And I hope that you will experience the truth of God's love for you and that you will choose to yield everything to him. So that like Joshua, you can say with confidence, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Pray with me. Lord God, so many times we're short. We don't, we don't think the long game. We're just playing the short game. But we need to put ourselves in a position where we can serve you better so that our house will serve you. Amen. That is the greatest thing we can ask, that we be allowed to walk with the Master, to be by his side, to do his bidding, to be stronger than we are today to be the Christian that we should be every day. Bow your heads with me in a prayer. Lord God, we thank you so much for this time we've had together. We pray that you have been worshiped and praised. We ask that Lord, that you would guide and direct us as we leave this place Help us to be the Christian that you would have us to be. Until we meet again. Amen. Through mountains and valleys, your faithfulness.